Hello and a very warm welcome to another edition of Talking Germany, the show where we do just that. And my guest today is a man who has a place in the hearts of many Germans, young and old, but especially the younger generation, because he is, I think it's fair to say, Germany's most popular writer of children's songs. He's released no fewer than 50 albums so far, sold a staggering 15 million records, and here he is, Rolf Zukowski. Thank you for joining us today on uh, Talking Germany, Rolf. So what is, what, what's the big difference between a children's song and an adult's song? Well, first of all, it's coming from the heart of somebody and you have to be a child at heart to write good children's songs. And you don't really have to be a child to write good uh, adult, adult songs. But I think children sing and they should sing and it's not just music for listening. Mm but to, to get into the song and think it's my song. Mm -hmm. That's the best quality of a children's song, that the child does not think about who has written it, from whom, but it's my song. And I think that's not always the same with the adult songs. Does it help to have children of your own, or even, as you, the case is with you, to have grandchildren? I think I would not have written children's songs without uh, becoming a father. Ah. Uh, when my first uh, child, my daughter Anushka, was two years old, she started mm -hmm. singing, and mm -hmm. I realized she sang the good old German folk songs, the same that I sang as a child. There, there was something missing. Uh, the normal life of a child in the 70s was missing. And so I had some fun uh, eventing song parts with her, not really uh -huh. writing songs, but mm -hmm. we sang walking and driving and standing somewhere. <laughs> and so it's a developing repertoire with the child on your hand. Just tell me about the music in your family when you were a youngster. My mother sang uh, songs like Island in the Sun, mm -hmm. the German version, of course. Uh -huh. My father was a sailor, so things like La Paloma mm -hmm. and uh, the other sailor stuff was normal. And there were very few uh, traditional children's songs like uh, Der Mai, Der Mai, Der Lustige Mai. <laughs> so I grew up in a family of between Schlager or Operetta. Mm -hmm. So uh, there was not really children's repertoire in my childhood. And uh, you then, at some stage, began writing children's songs. Mm -hmm. How old were you when you wrote the very first song that you thought, right, I've written a children's song here? Um, my, my daughter was three years old, so I must have been 24 or so. Yes, I think so, 24. <laughs> have you ever written a song that you thought, this is going to go down very, very well with children, and then you've played it to children and they've gone, Rolf? <laughs> yeah. One the first song on the TV show you heard, uh, it's Und ganz doll mich, a very slow kind of ballad. Yeah. I interrupted my show in Hamburg when I played it first because I thought nobody would like it, but it became a number two or three hit and uh, I was in an error. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Have you ever made any efforts to translate your songs, your success into the English language or into any other languages? Uh, some other people did. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a Canadian songwriter who has uh, translated my song Lieder, die wir Brücken sind, Build Your Bridges with a Song. Mm -hmm. But um, I think it should come from a native speaker to adopt my songs. And this has happened in Poland, in, mm -hmm. in, in, in uh, Chesco, in, and in Guatemala, in Spanish, many songs. Oh, we've got some uh, photos, I think. We've got some yes. photos of, uh, let me see, we've got Guatemala and, uh, and China. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Just tell us what's mm -hmm. happening here, Rolf. This was the bird's wedding, one of my children's musicals in Guatemala. Mm -hmm. This is in uh, Shanghai, the same stuff. And Guatemala has a German school at the city. And Gretel Lossau has translated my songs there and was my kind of botschafter, what is uh, An ambassador, am ambassador mm -hmm. of Rolf's music in the Latin American world. I've asked this question on this show before, but I must ask it again because it's so very important. Why are so many children in Germany getting such a rotten start to life? How do you explain it? Um, I think our society has a distance to ch children in the normal life, even up to the uh, politicians. Mm. They are not family people. So it, it's going all through the heads. What do you, what do you mean with that? Do you mean there they are very, don't very few family people uh, ruling our country? That's an interesting observation. Uh, You're and not it's talking... all going through their heads yeah. and too little through their hearts. Uh -huh. Otherwise, they would have uh, different um, decisions or priorities, I think. Mm. 
You've, you, you've addressed some of the problems that children are facing. You have, you have a foundation of your own called, that you have set up called mm -hmm. Children Need Music. Yeah. The idea is to give children from homes where they possibly wouldn't have access to music, to give them that it's access, yeah? Part, part of uh, mm -hmm. this, uh, but general music has so much power yeah. to, to, to get children to, to what they would not live otherwise. They can get into roles, they can play somebody in some part of uh, its life that they are not really princes or robbers or mm -hmm. pirates or so. And when they sing, they join others uh, and feeling uh, some kind of solidarity, mm -hmm. musical solidarity. They can have solos and yeah. they can uh, get into uh, the team. Yeah. So Teamwork I think is very uh, music there, is some, some good way for children to overwhelm poverty mm -hmm. uh, on the uh, money side uh, yeah. by, by heart and soul. There's a problem there in German schools. I mean, I have two kids at German schools and they don't do very much sport and they certainly don't do enough singing. And most of the science tells us that mm -hmm. if you do sport yeah. and if you do singing especially, yeah. Yeah. you're, you're going to learn better. I think parents have to uh, think about this. They want their children to have good jobs and have a secure life. But what makes a, a real f life of fulfilled hopes has much to do with art and with heart and with music. Mm -hmm. And you don't just learn better, but you, you feel better as a being on this earth when you are musical or uh, not just financial being. A more rounded yeah. personality, yeah, mm -hmm. etc. Uh, you grew up in a working class family, I think yes. it's fair to say. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is Germany becoming a more divided society? Yes, I, I fear. Uh, when you go through the cities, there are parts of the city that you think you are in a different country. Mm -hmm. It's not, all, all, it's not just in Germany. It's like, I think it's an international development. But um, when I was a child, everybody had very little, very few. They all started with 40 Deutschmarks after the war. And uh, it was one thing, it has to be better in the future and it will be better in the future for everyone. And now it's getting much better for some few, yeah. uh, galloping kind of progress. Yeah. And it's getting worse and worse for very, not few, but many others. And I think that's a, a very bad development. Well, Rolf and I were just sitting here and sharing our enthusiasm for mm -hmm. Hamburg. You're, you're a homeboy, you're a local lad. Yes. When was the last time you swam in the Elbe? Oh, the it's uh, been the Elbe swimming day oh, three yeah. years ago. Three years ago. And I was in the water just to here because <laughs> it's different uh, in Hamburg than yeah. anywhere. You have the big ships and yeah. you have the waves from the ships yeah. and it's re really dangerous. Not because the water is polluted. Oh, and is the but, water clean then? Is it clean? Uh, it doesn't look clean, but... Uh, People say it's clean enough to, <laughs> to even drink it if you want to, not too much. Really? Yeah. <laughs> but you can risk. Uh, the Elbe as a river, it's not just a river where people go swimming. Yeah. It's a river that go goes right across Europe. It's a major river and it has a real story. Yeah, for me it's a living being. Living being. Mm -hmm. It has its source, we have our birth, and it has its flowing into the sea, so we have to go and somewhere at uh, the end of our lives. But and I look on the river like this, it's coming from Czechoslovakia. Yeah. Czech, no, it's that, Czesko a, now, not yeah, The not Czech Slovakia. Republic. Yeah? Czech Republic, That's yes. where the source of the river is. Yes, yeah? it's the giant's uh, mountains. Mm -hmm. have, have, you been to these, have you been to the source uh, of the river? I'm going there having my birthday this year, and oh. I'm uh, going to jump over the river, uh -huh. over the Elbe, what <laughs> you cannot do in Hamburg. <laughs> How wide is it then up there? Yeah, uh, it must it's be a small river. Tiny. It's a creek. It's a, little it's a creek, yeah. kind of creek, but it's gathering from even smaller creeks. Yeah. And in Hamburg, it's about three kilometers uh, uh, where we live. You could never jump across it. Let's just have a look at some more photos of Rolf with one of his projects with children's choirs along the River Elbe. There you go, Rolf. What's, mm -hmm. what, what have we got here? Uh, we have uh, made a tour uh, going up the Elbe against the, the stream yeah. uh, from Cuxhaven, where mm -hmm. the, the river goes to the North Sea, yeah. up to Mjelnik, where the Moldau comes into the Elbe. Oh, and yeah. this year we have uh, the, the opposite. Ten years later, we, we're coming down. We start in Litomierzice and Potjeprady in Mjelnik. And we have 30 choirs mm -hmm. meeting, getting together, singing on stage, all open air, uh -huh. seven weekends. 
Wow. Mm -hmm. You're beginning to sound like sort of, it, it, it all sounds a little bit like Mark Twain and Huckleberry <laughs> Finn, sort of the uh, myth. We, we would the like river. to sing on the river, but it's very, <laughs> very hard to find a ship because the Elbe is a living river uh -huh. and uh, you cannot go by ship everywhere, and, in, uh, at least not in summer. And you're singing German folk songs, Czech folk songs. And my songs, and your some, songs. some of mine, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, each choir has its kind of musical profile, mm -hmm. but we are getting together, listening to each other and singing together. Things like a children of Europe, of course. <laughs> I'd like to go into the background and the history of these folk songs just a little bit, Rolf. Uh, there's a, there's a German singer-songwriter, Franz Josef Degenhardt. Mm -hmm. He wrote a song a while ago, yeah, but he talks about a problem about German folk songs. I've translated the lines, yeah? yeah? Dead they are, the old songs, he wrote. Mm -hmm. The teachers have talked them down, the kids have disowned them, and the Nazi brown shirts shouted them out and stamped them into the ground. Yeah. Is that something that happened with German folk songs? Is that accurate? At least in the 50s. 60s and then they were uh, recovered or uh, new, newly invented yeah. song by song there were verses you could not sing and there were parts of the song you could sing and so you could get acquainted with old material ah. that had been put down under the carpet or uh, in, in some other treasury parts. <laughs> but there's very very good material that could be sung more I think uh, but newly written songs are as, as important and, and can become folk songs if, if they are good songs. That's fascinating what you're saying. I can remember when I first came to Germany, I got my walking boots out mm -hmm. and I said to my liberal friends, let's go walking in the country. And, and people sang. looked at me, walking in the yeah, country? Yeah, 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 That's very yeah. suspicious. That sounds like folk songs a little bit. It's the yeah. same kind of mentality. I watch people walking, young people walking, uh, but they don't sing walking, and uh, not too much. They sing uh, in the evening, and maybe they don't sing at all, but the Wandervogel yeah. uh, kind of singing, I think this is still not very common. A, qu a quick answer. Do people now, I mean, there's been this revival. Do people now sing more or less than they used to 10, 20 years ago? They sing more in the stadiums, football, soccer stadiums, <laughs> and complicated real songs. Yeah. They sing at rock concerts and yeah. very complicated uh, stuff, not just one refrain, the whole story. I think they sing less in the families because mm. the family is not so much together. May maybe they sing on their cars, uh, going to a holiday <laughs> and back. Yeah. And they sing Rolf Tukowski uh, songs. Maybe, yeah, with, I've, with I've been in that least, situation. With their children at least, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and maybe in family occasions, weddings and so, uh, singing is part of it. Maybe new new lyrics on, on good melodies, and uh, so singing is not that. No, not really. Good. I like that one. On that note, we're going to move to the quiz mm -hmm. towards the end of the show, Rolf. Um, what comes first for you when you're writing a song? Lyrics or music? Lyrics. Lyrics. Folk songs or pop songs? Folk songs. Beethoven or the Beatles? The Beatles. <laughs> Travelling or touring? Uh, Travelling. Uh, Germany, a poor country or a rich country? It's rich. Rich. Have you written your best song yet or is your best song still to come? I hope it's still, it's still to come because uh, that's my, <laughs> my future. It should be the best song I've ever written. Yeah. Rolf Zukowski, a very prolific and very charming guest. If you've enjoyed his company, come back next week. Cheers. Cheers.